Welcome to this World of Warcraft Let's Play. You're with Sambo, and well, actually you're not with anybody because we don't actually have a character. And in fact, that's a bit of a tough choice, guys. Um, I really like the Drenai starting zone. I'd really like to do that. I really like the Blood Elf starting zone. That's one of my favorites. I love the music there, love the graphics. Then again, perhaps we should do a Worgen starting zone or a Troll, something from the Cataclysm expansion because perhaps some of you haven't taken the plunge and gone down that road yet, I'm not sure. Then again, I do have a number of level 80 characters having played WoW for so many years. I uh, have a nice tank there, I've got a nice healer. Maybe what we'll do with this particular Let's Play series, rather than actually play through, maybe we'll hop around a bit, we'll do a couple of different starting zones, we'll hop on the tank and do some five-man runs, we'll hop on the heels, do the same thing. Yeah, I think that's possibly what we'll do. So we'll, we'll sort of stray from our standard Let's Play formula, rather than going all the way from, you know, a level 1 to level 85. We'll just jump around and keep things interesting and mixed up. So perhaps the first thing that we'll do maybe is, let me think. Yeah, you know what, I think we'll roll something in the Worgen starting zone because perhaps that's something that people haven't seen and out of all the new Cataclysm content, that's definitely one of my favourites. Got a great feel in there. So let's uh, run through that. I won't put you through the character creator um, because I'm sure you've all seen it a hundred times before and let's face it, there's not that many options in there anyhow. So I'll cut straight to the Worgen starting zone intro and from there we'll start leveling, start going through the storyline content there which I really like. So yeah, there we go. Hope you enjoy and we'll see you in a moment. Bye bye. Led by their indomitable king, Gen Greymane, the proud citizens of Gilneas once stood with the Alliance against the vile, orcish horde that sought to conquer all of Lordaeron. Gilneas survived, but in the chaotic years following the Second War, the mighty kingdom drew ever inward. Distrustful of their former allies, the Gilneans erected a mighty wall at the borders of their land, closing off their nation and their hearts from an ever-darkening world. Now, many years later, as the seemingly unstoppable undead scourge marches across Lordaeron, human civilization once again teeters on the brink of destruction. As war and terror close in all around them, the citizens of Gilneas are faced with one terrible truth. Their mighty wall cannot hold back the dead for much longer. And worse, Rumors of a new threat have arisen within the kingdom's borders, of feral, nightmare creatures that walk upright as men, but hunt and howl as wolves. And there we go, folks. Welcome to the world of Warcraft. And yes, I've chosen a mage. I haven't played a mage for quite some time. Stand ready, uh, guards. We don't know how many intruders we're dealing with. But the headlands are overrun and were cut off from the harbour towns. Expect to be outnumbered. That's right. That's good old Prince Liam Greymane. And of course, if you're up with your WoW lore, you'll know that the Greymane Wall is something that's been in the game for quite some time. Uh, down in the... Actually, I don't think we're going to be able to see it, really. Are we? No. The map in the game at the moment is actually locked into the starting area, so we can't actually see the whole world. But those of you who have ever played any Horde characters will remember the Greymane Wall, and of course we're right behind it now. That's where we are in the city of Gilneas and of course at the moment we're a human female um, and those of you who know the lore will, uh, that's the story lore that is, will know that that's going to change. I won't spoil the surprise just yet. Um, so we should probably start with uh, a quick run through the UI because things have changed. If you haven't played WoW for some time um, then yeah things have definitely changed in the cataclysm patches uh, all sorts of things uh, different if you if it's been like you know even six months to a year since you've played you'll notice quite a number of things now i've got a few add-ons that i run uh, and i'll go through them as we progress through the series but let's just start with the basic stuff i guess now 
the character uh, panel has actually changed just a little bit now your titles aren't up here I'll show you where they are in a minute uh, but you've got your usual paper doll in the middle there and of course all your gear around the outside you've got a reputation tab here <clears throat> which if you hover over it actually shows you the numeric value for all the various factions in the game. There's this little option down the bottom here now because uh, you might have noticed there's a whole bunch of stuff missing i.e. your stats. They're still there folks, don't fret, they're here. You click this side button and it pops out now. So down here we have uh, all of our stats and our resistances. Now by the way you can reorder these as well. Um, there's a little uh, up and down arrow at the top here and you can actually say well look I actually don't want to see my melee stats at the top because I'm a ranged or a spell character which I am at the moment we can actually move them around uh, but they're very very powerful uh, tooltips here now as well for example spell power uh, haste whatever if, if you look at your haste rating for example that was always something that people used to get confused about it does say haste plus zero 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 percent at the moment of course because we're right at the beginning but if you hover it actually describes uh, the specifics of that particular stat so for example um, let's have a look at hit chance the hit rating is zero at the moment of course but it actually gives you an option there to see that hey on a target that's level one we have a four percent chance of missing but on a target of level three we have a six percent chance of missing and level four or a skull which is like a boss or something that's way too high for us we actually have a 17% chance of missing. So you can see now that these stats are really, really good. Mana regen, 59 mana regenerated every 5 seconds while not in combat. And that's another big change if you're used to the MP5 stat or the mana per 5 second stat. Uh, that's actually gone. Um, and you can see here now that we have not in combat regen and combat regen. They're actually uh, organized a lot different now. It's a lot easier to understand. So depending on the gear we've got, let's have a look. I don't think we'll have any, no, we won't have any stats on our gear at the moment. But I'll show you that as we go through and get some gear with stats on it. A lot easier to understand. A crit chance there. Um, up the top you'll notice a couple of tabs. We've actually got a titles tab now. So we don't have any titles at the moment. But that's where they sit. They no longer sit in a drop down menu up the top. And we have have the built-in equipment manager which I'm a big fan of in fact I use it all the time let's make ourselves a new set um, so I'm gonna click the plus icon there and I'm gonna call this the normal set because we may have uh, different sets for I don't know social occasions one for fishing um, one for DPS one for no, who knows on a mage we're probably not gonna have that many uh, but if you want to make a set, uh, this is great being able to switch gear very quickly. So you give it a name, uh, give it an icon. I'm just going to choose the first icon there. And you can see that um, we, when we click on it, we can actually select here down the side of our items we can now it's not going to make much sense at the moment because we don't have any other gear but we could actually choose uh, different uh, what it does is it brings up the sets of gear that are in that slot only so you don't have to muck about you can just click on this little icon and select something different and when you actually hover over these icons it does give you a static tooltip compare so you can see what you're wearing versus uh, what you're about to put on you can also um, ignore this slot or you can put an item in your bag through this little menu here. So it's quite cool. Uh, and obviously later on we get to um, very quickly swap between the sets if we want to. So it's a nice handy option there. Um, so yeah, that's the character window. Nothing too special. A, little, a couple of changes but nothing too major. Um, let's go into the spell book and abilities. Now if you haven't played for a while, this will look very, very different. Uh, instead of the plain old boring list, uh, now what it does is it actually shows you what is coming up uh, because of course WoW is a skill based leveling game so you gain skills as you level. Uh, for example this here is the general tab so we've got uh, a list of our skills, uh, what weapons we can use and it says there that we can use daggers, staves, one handed swords and we can use uh, wands as a ranged weapon. Uh, what else have we got here? What languages that we're able to speak? But you can see here if I hover over this one which is greyed out, Apprentice Riding, it says that it's available at level 20. Uh, you can learn to ride mounts. Um, and by the way, if you haven't played WoW for a while, yes, that's right, you can now ride at level 20. You don't have to wait till level 40 anymore. Um, but what it does <coughs> is it gives you an idea of what you can get and when. So for example, it, here if we go right up to level 60, Flight Master's License allows you to fly uh, ride rather flying mounts in the eastern kingdoms Kalimdor and Deep Home. <clears throat> Excuse my frog in my throat. Now that's another big thing. Yes, you heard right. If you haven't played for a while, you can now actually fly around in Stormwind or Org or any of those places 
flying has been enabled in all the old worlds, all the classic vanilla zones. So uh, that's a massive change. Uh, and you just tab through these uh, down the bottom here. But let's have a look, for example, at uh, our actual spells. And of course, if you know WoW and you know your mage class, you know that we've got Arcane, we've got Fire, and we've got Frost, depending on which talent tree you go down. Um, and for example, if I hover over this one, Arcane Missiles, we can see that it's available at level 3, which is good, repeatedly causes Arcane damage. And another big change here, Mana Cost is free. There you go. So um, in the old days, this one used to actually cost you a mana, or mana, however you like to say it. Um, now it is free, activated by casting other damage spells. So as soon as it comes up, um, like in other words, if you cast a fireball or a firebolt, this arcane missiles would come up and it doesn't cost any mana. That's a big change. But you can see here, um, you, you know, you're able to actually flick through and see what you get all the way through to level 85 which is a great idea and when um, you're actually able to learn one of these because of course you have to go to a class trainer to learn it it will actually highlight and say please visit your class trainer so it's really cool so that's changed a lot um, professions are now in here as well and you'll see that this has changed a great deal as well if you haven't played for a while. You've got, you got your, your primary and secondary professions up the top there, of course, we don't have any at the moment. You've got fishing, cooking and first aid, the normal stuff um, that everyone can train. Uh, you may not know about archaeology, we'll get into that because I'll definitely take archaeology on this character so you can have a look at it. Uh, that's a new, um, uh, like profession that isn't part of the main set and by that I mean you know if you take um, tailoring or alchemy or um, armor crafting or whatever of your two other professions you know herbalism alchemy that you take you can still have all these four so no matter what professions you actually decide to take you can still have archaeology fishing cooking and first aid and once we get uh, to there I'll come back in this window and there's a lot of useful information in there so that's changed quite a lot um, obviously we have our quest log um, that is empty at the moment, we'll pick up a quest in a moment. We also have a new tool in one of the more recent patches, uh, and this is a guild finder. It acts a bit like uh, the dungeon finder, and we'll get to that once we um, level up a bit. But this one allows you to actually search for a guild, and what it does as you open it up and you can see here we've got settings like uh, hey what are you interested in from a guild are you interested in questing uh, pvp dungeons role playing raids you just tick the things that sort of interest you what your availability is like you know weekdays or weekends and what sort of role you are now of course being a mage we can only choose damage we can't do heals or tanking and you can add uh, a comment and then you click on browse guilds and it will bring up a list of um, you know guilds that are appropriate to the requirements that you've set so it makes it very very easy to find guilds in the game it's a great idea uh, and of course you've got your requests that are coming in as well if you are a guild leader so we won't bother with that at the moment um, what else can I show you quickly uh, not much I guess I mean the map has changed by the way if you can now minimize it so that it sits up to the side so you can continue running around and of course we've still got our little pip there so we can see where we are um, and you can show your quest objectives uh, to the side of that now we don't have any quests yet uh, but once we get that I'll show you the new functionality there and of course you can still actually make it a full screen if you wish if you want to see the detail on the maps which is sometimes handy uh, but we'll leave it like this for now so we can see where we're going um, yeah, so I do have some add-ons. Uh, you'll see down the bottom here, bottom right, I've got a DPS meter uh, that is called Recount. Actually, I'll put a list of the add-ons I have uh, at some stage in the Let's Play comments because there's quite a few. Uh, Atlas is another great one here. Uh, this one allows us to uh, have maps up of, or oh, let's take a look, say, Blackrock Caverns, all the instances in the game. Uh, Nomragon there. And this is a really cool, cool, cool add-on because you don't get a lot of maps well actually the later dungeons do have built-in maps but a lot of the earlier ones don't so let's say I don't know let's find something that's old school like Scarlet Monastery there's the uh, Scarlet Monastery Armory what it also does in combination with another um, add-on called Atlas Loot uh, allows us to actually see what the rewards are so for example we all know that Herod is at the end of the Scarlet Monastery Armory what I can do here is I can click on this button and this brings up a list of the items that he actually drops uh, so for example there I can see that he drops the Scarlet Leggings there's all the stats for it uh, I can actually link them in chat as well for example if I uh, go say and um, shift click that uh, that will actually link so if you're ever wanting to show people what uh, 
yeah, what gear drops in what instances. Uh, this uh, Atlas loot is really handy because, of course, that will drop that link in chat and you can show everyone what it is that they uh, can expect to get. We've got Herod's shoulder there. So that's Atlas and Atlas loot. Very, very cool. Um, Add-on, of course, we're not going to be using it just yet because we're not going to be running any dungeons. I also use another little pet add-on called Gut Pet. We'll look at that in a moment when I get some pets. Uh, because you can see here, I actually have some mail already, and that's why, why I came over to the mailbox because I've got a very important task to do, and that is to get all my stuff because I own the collector's editions for all of WoW, uh, plus I've bought a couple of pets. So I want to get them out as soon as possible because they will disappear. By the way, don't worry about that window popping up. Some of the add-ons throw up errors from time to time. And I've got my settings set so that it actually shows those errors. You can disable that. All right, so let's grab these out of the mailbox. You can see here, for example, I have the Cataclysm Collector's Edition pet. A little death wing there. And there we go, my very first achievement. Collector's Edition Little little Deathwing, owner of the Cataclysm Collector's Edition Little Deathwing pet. Uh, so, achievements, by the way, are... Gosh, it's been a while. I don't think my achievements... Where are they? Are they here still? What is the button for achievements? I don't actually know. Oh, there it is. Y. My bad. Y is the button for achievements. So it brings up the achievement screen there, and of course there are thousands and thousands of achievements in the world of Warcraft. The great thing about the achievement list here is that it actually tells you the details. So for example, um, let's have a look if I can give you an example. When you click on them for a start, it gives you a little tracker, and by the way, you can track these over in your quest tracker. So let's say, for example, I wanted to track this one here. Uh, five daily quests complete. What I can do is click the track button and you can see up the top here objectives five daily quests complete uh, and by the way these are hot linkable so I can click on that in the quest tracker and it will actually bring up the relevant achievement or quest if it's a quest there and it's got a little count there so you can always track what's going on plus there's a little button underneath the minimap here which means you can get rid of all your objectives because for example if we've got lots of quests going on we may not want to see them all at once we can just minimize them out of the way that's really handy um, what was I going to show you? Oh, that's right, there is something... I just wanted to show you a detail. Uh, let me see, we'll untrack that. I just wanted to show you the detail of some of these... Um Oh, there we go. Okay, so for example, here's a achievement that's called Let's uh, That Takes Class. Get an honourable killing blow on one of each class. If I expand, you can actually see down there that it does list them all, and it will tick them off as we go through. And again, when you track it, it actually shows you the list of things that you still have to do. So a very, very handy uh, tracking and achievement tool there. I love it. And of course, you can spend absolute hundreds and hundreds of hours going through the achievements once you, or at any point in time, but it's a, a whole meta game of and itself. So. Let's pull out all of these pets, etc. This one's for having the collector's edition of the Burning Crusade expansion. And we get another achievement there uh, for owning the Nether Whelp, which is a special pet if you have the Burning Crusade collector's edition. Uh, I bought the Monk. There was a, a promotion a couple of years ago, I think, or a year ago, something around there, uh, whereby if you bought a pet, they donated a whole bunch of money to the Make-A-Wish Foundation or half Half of the funds generated, I think, by buying these pets off the pet store. Uh, I bought the Pandaren Monk because I'm a big fan of the Pandaren Monk, and we'll show him in a minute. Got the Wrath of the Lich King Collector's Edition Frosty. There he goes. And we should get an achievement for that. We're already um, building up the achievements. There you go. You can see that uh, owner of the Wrath of the Lich King Collector's Edition Frost Worm Whelp pet. Very nice. And we've got a Core Hound Pup here. I can't remember. I think this is when I added an authenticator to my battle net. Yeah, there we go. Uh, thank you for achieving an uh, for attaching rather an authenticator to your Bnet account. We'd like you to present you with this friendly, fiery little core hound cup. Pup, we'll get him. And from Briani, I got Ch uh, Mr. Chili. I honestly can't remember how I got Mr. Chili. Briani is, of course, the pet vendor in Dalaran. Um, no, it doesn't say there. Don't know why. Don't know how. Can't remember. Anyway, so of course, once you receive these items, we hit B to get our bags. We need to learn them uh, because these are basically spells, as you can see there, teaches you how to summon these pets. So, for example, let's um, right-click. Here we go. I've now learned that pet 
spell uh, and I'll be able to summon him in the future and I got an achievement there called can I keep him obtain a companion a pet sexy we've already got 10 achievement points uh, we're going quite well of course to summon that what I can do is I can go into my um, my P my abilities here and now I have another tab you remember before we went through all the spells we've got professions here now I have a companion tab and this tab is much better than the way it used to be as well uh, you can actually see all the pets and you can summon them just by double clicking on them and there we go nether whelp Seraphis, Seraphis's companion and if we click on her she makes a little noise now by the way apologies if I haven't quite got the sound levels right as you know first couple of episodes we have to play around with the sound just to get the level just so it may be too loud maybe too quiet I'm not sure let's learn these other ones here we've got our little Deathwing, and we've got Frosty's Collar the Core Hound Pup the uh, Unhatched Mr. Chili and our Pandaren Monk uh, now they all disappear except for the Netherwhelp's Collar but if I open up my companion window, here we go, you can see them all, there's pictures of Frosty, so again we can just double click on them to bring them out. Now if you wanted to, of course you could drag one of these to an available um, skill slot, let's move our hearthstone around, and just summon them from there. So I can now just, I never have to open this window if I want to use up some of my um, slots on my spell bars. You can see there's my Pandaren Monk. <laughs> very oriental themed now he will do a bunch of stuff he'll do some kung fu uh, left to his own devices but I don't know if uh, some people know with the Pandaren monk he actually responds to a couple of emotes so for example if I go slash bow you watch what happens and there we go the Pandaren monk actually bows back I can also share a drink if I go slash drink you raise a drink to Pandaren Monk and he sits down and I think he should pull out is it is it that or is it cheer? Hang on. I thought it was drink. Cheers! There's my voice. Oh, that's another thing by the way. The voices in there he goes, he's having a drink. That's the one. The voices in the Worgen starting zone aren't the standard voices for females, etc. So for example, if I try and generate a voice. I don't have a target. There we go. They're actually British accents. Well, they're probably poor approximations. <laughs> Of a British accent. Let's see if we can get it up. I here. need to target something first. And let's have a listen to one of the jokes, shall we? I love Darnassus. Trees everywhere. Let's try another one. And of course, the emote for jokes is slash silly. <coughs> Ahem. Pardon. All right, she's got a fur ball in her throat there. Of course, anyone who knows what's going on here will know what that is about. Let's have a listen to another one. Mmm, that's like. Is that bacon? Hey guys, I smell... You smell bacon? Bacon, anyone? Oh, that's bacon! Bacon! Who's got the bacon? Where's the bacon? Alright, so obviously she's a big fan of the bacon. There we go. Now, one of the uh, add-ons that I mentioned before, by the way, is a, a thing called Gut Pet. Here it is, G-U-P-P-E-T. If I bring the control panel up for that, we can see that it um, puts a little icon above here that I can move around. Uh, I want to be able to use that. I'm going to turn it on. And what this actually does, I'm just going to get it uh, aligned up there. There we go, make that locked. Close. It actually allows us to um, randomly, well, yeah, basically if I click on this, it'll randomly pull up a pet. So I never have to go in here and actually choose one. I can, of course, if I wish. But uh, by clicking on this, if I shift click, it'll dismiss my pet. And there you can see the old Pandaren monk is gone. If I just click on this, it'll pull up a random one out of my spell book. So I can just keep clicking on that. And there's the monk again. Nether whelp. Little Deathwing. Hello. Hello little Deathwing. Uh, so it's quite a handy little tool. Uh, by the way, it also works for mounts. So we can get rid of this icon on our toolbar. And it also works for, for mounts later on. It'll choose from one of your mounts if you've got hundreds of them, etc. Et uh, you'll notice also I have a little um, uh, bar that's not standard down the bottom. That there I'll explain in a minute. And you'll also see some cooldown timers and stuff pop up. We'll get to that later. In the meantime, let's dismiss our pet. I think we're all ready to go. Let's go and see Greymane and pick up okay, our very mate. first quest. So he's saying it's Stand locked ready, down. Guards. 
go see Lieutenant Walden in the northwestern the end of Merchant Square. Alright, so the old familiar sound of accepting a quest there. And again, just to make sure that you're across all the changes, you can see here on the minimap now, anyone that we actually have selected will pop up on the minimap. That is actually a new feature. So if you've got somebody selected, you can actually see where they are and run to them. Naturally, of course, all the normal things are there, like uh, the question mark on the minimap, which shows us where we need to head to. Uh, now, by the way, there's a filter down the side here. We can turn things on or off. I like to turn things most on, for example, uh, most things on rather like repairs, uh, points of interest, mailboxes, innkeepers, food and drink, uh, flight master, profession trainers, a regents vendor, we want one of those, auctioneer, battle master, all those things. I just turn them all on. Uh, and if you want a low level quest, of course, if you're a higher level player. So all of these things now show up on the minimap. You can see there I've got a mailbox that we can run towards. Now, if I actually uh, bring up the minimap, you can see that there's a question mark there on the uh, little minimap. That is new as well if you haven't played for a while. It uh, basically takes over what Quest Helper used to do, which was that third party add on that everyone used to run. And I can actually click on that there. Wait a minute, why isn't that I working? Should be able to. Maybe we have to maximize. Oh, there we go. So when you maximize no the screen now, you can actually. No if we had more than one quest, you can actually go down the side here and it will highlight on the map where you need to go. And it will actually show you the quest text and the rewards that you get, which is pretty cool. Now that's optional. We can turn that on or off, uh, uh, but it doesn't actually show up on this mini version of the map, but it does show you your objectives over here. Now, what you can also do if you don't have the map open is we can actually click on this question mark in our tracker now and it will actually bring up a map showing you exactly where it is and if we click on the name it will actually bring up the quest the actual quest log so once again question mark brings up the map and name brings up the actual quest which has now a show map button as well which you can bring up so lots of cool little handy navigation tools there let's go find our first dude where are they it says that they're up here somewhere Let's have a look see. Ah, there we go. Oh! Uh oh, doesn't look good. Deep claw marks run through the man's corpse. Uh oh. Alright, so you can see here I've got a number of add ons that show uh, when I gain XP. You can see uh, also when I gain reputation. Reputation with Gilneas increased by 250. Uh, and we got a whole bunch of XP and some money. Now actually, uh, with the scrolling combat text that I'm using, a lot of people use, actually let's just accept this, we have to uh, go tell Greymane that we uh, unfortunately found his body and not the person. Uh, if we go into the options here, go into interface, you'll see that I'm actually using, where is it? Floating combat text. I used to use the scrolling con combat text add-on, uh, but now, you know what, the built-in one is actually just good enough. There's so many options in here. So I'm just using that. All right, hello Gilnean Crow. I wonder if we can attack you. Let's see if we can use our first, very first fireball. And there you'll see, by the way, well, they can survive a big hit. <laughs> That's interesting. You'll see that I had that, uh, like there was a new cast bar down the bottom. It's actually called Quartz. That's a, uh, another add-on. Again, I'll put a link to that in the description. That is a really cool cast bar which shows a latency, shows a whole bunch of things, shows buffs and debuffs on your target. We'll get into that later. Let's go hand this in. And you can see, by the way, already there's a number of things that are happening in terms of the phasing technology in WoW. Now we'll get into this a lot later because uh, a lot of the map, and I'm going to uh, bring it up here, a lot of the map out here as we get out into the starting zone, you will notice it phases. And what that means is that the actual, uh, well, the contents of the zone that you're in actually change over time. And in our case with Gilneas, the actual landscape changes. They've not just limited it to um, setting up new events and switching out NPCs. The entire actual geography changes. It's incredible technology. And you can see it at work here. What they did... I don't have a target. Yep, okay, I'm not a big fan of these European voices either, these English voices, but we'll get through it. Um, while they sent us off over here, out of view of the main square, they actually switched what was happening. So just for us now, okay, you can see when we were here before, if you rewind the video to the very beginning, uh, we've got, oh, look at that, we've got a nasty rampaging organ, by the way. Now, these guys weren't here before. There was no fighting going on before. It got phased when we were out around the corner, and now that we've come back in, we're in a completely different phase. Very clever technology. Let's carry on. 
Something's amiss. For my people. There we go. And we've now got a couple of new quests. And once again, apologies if the game sound is too loud and it's drowning out my voice. We'll fix it up in the next next episode. Here we go, we want you to slay six rampaging worgen and we get ourselves a nice fur coat. Now like other games there's a dressing room, if you hold down control and hit click you can actually see what that cloak will look like on your character and you can reset to see what you look like without it. So let's accept that, we definitely want that. And evacuate the merchant square, evacuate, evacuate, goodness me that was close, um, three civilian homes. So now you'll see up the top here in our tracker we actually have two quests listed and again I can actually click on these to bring up a map, a great addition, I'm going to maximise my map now, in fact I'm going to get rid of the quest text so you can, oh no we have to actually have it there, just in case you can't see it, there's a blue zone around the particular quest that we are uh, so have selected, so for example all hell breaks loose, I click on that and you can see there's a blue area, that's where the objectives are, they're actually in that area, so it shows you the zone whereabouts they are. For example, if these objectives were way up here, it would actually show you a nice blue area of where you need to go to. It's very cool. And it actually does show you this on the main map as well. Uh, we also have another quest to pick up, I see, just south of here. Hello, Gwen. What can I do for you? Salvage the supplies. Uh, we have to salvage four supply crates, and that gives us a nice bag. We, of course, want as many bags as possible. A nice Good day. six slot bag. Now, I do actually like the Cockney accent of her. Now, she's a very important character. Let's go up close and have a look at her. You see, there's a whole bunch of new models here in terms of the outfits, etc., that you, that you won't be used to in Vanilla Well or indeed uh, Burning Crusade or Wrath of the Lich King. It's all new stuff for this area, which is really cool, including the whole new voice I sets. I've got a bad feeling. So let's click on her. Any friend of Greymane is a friend of mine. What's your story? Get gabbing or get going. Ain't you a chipper looking one? You dare challenge me? Get lost. I grow tired of you. What's your story? So you can see that they've actually recorded quite a nice Cockney accent there. Unlike my own one, again, if I try and bring up an error message, or perhaps if I say, uh, hi. Fate has brought you here to me. Or maybe if we do a cry. <laughs> now that's really interesting because let's do that again. That cry is the old voice, um, if you listen. So that's the old American female voice, but if we do the high the beast in me hungers it's different so that's a bit slack if you ask me blizzard in fact that's very slack let's try some other emotes here gosh it's been so long since i've actually played let's try laugh <laughs> all right so that's very interesting you'll note that that in fact is the old emote as well which again is completely different to say this Okay, that I was don't a... really know why we do that. So I don't know why they didn't record new laughs, etc, etc. Let's try rasp. <laughs> Alright, that's definitely a new one. But anyway, so it's a bit half half assed there, Blizzard, I must say. But you'll see here this whole area is changed now uh, because it got phased while we were distracted around the corner. Now, for those of you who haven't played WoW before, yellow above a mob's head means that they're not aggressive. So they won't actually attack us until we attack them. And of course, being that it's a starting area, that's why they set them that way so that we don't get overwhelmed if we've never played the game before. And of course, you'll all know about the sparklies. Uh, sparklies are quest objectives, and in this case, of course, we have to, what is it, evacuate mar uh, Merchant Square, Market Homes evacuated, so we have to actually use this door, so let's do that. Here we go, what in the world, let's get, Gavin, or get, uh, let's get out of here. And you can see up here, we well, may not be able to, I'll try and put it on some plain background. Uh, up the top here, the quests actually uh, uh, update in the tracker, so it says one of three market homes evacuated, which is really, really handy, and you can actually hover over them in the map as well, and it says here one of three market homes evacuated, and of course, you can also see it in the actual quest log itself. So let's see if we can evacuate a couple more. Once again, you can see my cast bar down the bottom. Um, once we get into some longer casts, I'll explain that. It's a very, very cool thing. Whoa! This guy turned out to be a nasty. So that's no good. Oh, and I missed because I'm so low level. And of course, I'm sure I don't need to explain the portraits at the very top. 
Uh, let's loot this guy. Now, I've got auto loot set, by the way, so I don't have to do anything. It will just automatically loot mobs. But, of course, up the top here, I've got it set so that it actually displays the amount of health and the amount of mana. So, you can see I've got 52 out of 52 and 119 out of 119. That's just an option in the options screen. And, of course, when we select a uh, enemy or anything else, their, um, their portrait comes up there. Now, when I was casting, and I'll, I'll go through it again when we do another long cast, but you'll see it down the bottom here. It actually shows you how long that cast is and a countdown of it. So, for example, this here is a 1.5 second long cast. It will actually show you a timer on that casting bar. Very cool. And if any of our mobs had any dots put on us by any of our abilities, it would actually appear on the casting bar as well. And you might also notice that there's a little um, section at the beginning of the casting bar, uh, and that is actually my latency. So you can see how your latency is affecting your cast. Now, in the meantime, let's just open one of these supply crates and get ourselves some salvage supplies. And you can see that it counts off up in the top center of your screen as well. Very handy. But watch again as I uh, cast on this guy you'll see there it is that big red bit there is my latency by the way so it shows you and it actually says there 432 I need a target. oops 432 milliseconds someone helped us out there uh, and if I hover over my computer icon down the bottom there, you can actually see that uh, the latency does come up there. 197 milliseconds in the home and 464, which is changing all the time, milliseconds in the world. But the casting bar does show you that without having to go in and look. It's very handy. Let's just wrap up these early quests very quickly. There we go. Market homes evacuated. Oh, and we've got ourselves a wargan as well. Now, of course, being ranged and being a mage, I don't want to really get into melee combat. But, of course, if I want to, I can actually right-click on it. And you'll see that this quartz add-on shows a swing timer here. Oh, there we go. We've leveled up. You've reached level 2. But I don't know if you noticed that just under me. It actually shows you your default swing timer, which is really handy for melee classes, by the way. So, as you can see there, congratulations. You've reached level 2. Let's loot that mob. And you see that it pops it up here. We can actually, um, oh no, you can't click on that. I thought you could click on it. But you can see now <coughs> that we have we can go into our professions, go into our spell book, and we still don't have anything available because our first arcane missiles spell isn't available till level three, but we do have a quest hand in. So let's do that. We've got the old question mark over here. For my people. Thank you very much. Get ourselves some reputation and some XP. Let's finish these off. Actually, I'll show you that swing timer again. Again, I don't want to be normally doing this as a mage. You can see that I've got the scrolling combat set to show us when we enter combat. But you can see this swing timer here. It's a two-second swing, and that's really handy for your auto attacks when you're a melee class. It's, oh, we actually did manage to kill a worgen by hand. We've got four out of six of those. Um, you can also see here I've got it set up so that if we're in range, the number one above that ability is white. Because, of course, this cast spell, Fireball, has a 40-yard range. You may be used to 30 yards if you haven't played WoW for a while. If I go back, you'll see it turn, or you may not see it on the YouTube video, but right about here, it actually turns red. Which means if I it's try and... far away. There we go. If I try and cast it, it says out of range. But now I'm in range. That's a long way away to be. In the old days, it used to be 20 yards, and then it became 30, and of course now it's 40. It made things very easy for newbies, I must say. Five of six. Let's pop this last one. And there we go, six of six done. I think all we need to do now, again, having a look at our tracker, which is very handy. It says that we can return to the prints for that one, uh, but we have one of four of the salvage supplies. And once again, if I go into my map, let's have a look, we'll actually bring it up. Uh, it should show us the zone, there it is, glowing, that we can get those supplies in. Very, very handy, I like that. And again, they're basically ripped off the quest helper. Uh, mod, which is what Blizzard tend to do. They tend to take mods uh, that are very popular in the community and just include that functionality in the game. Not sure if that's quite morally right or not, but hey, if it works, why not have it in the, built into the game rather than overhead as an add-on. All right, there we go. We're all done. And you can see my XP bar up the top uh, of my spell abilities there that we are, well, what are we, about a third of the way through now to level three. So we could actually just kill off a few and level up but I'm guessing that our quests will probably take us all the way. But hey, 
combat's fun, let's kill some things while we're on the way back to the quest hand in. There we go. For Gilneas. Alright, we've got ourselves a nice fur coat. You can see it in the chat log there. Let's come up. And what else do we have to do? Oh, we've got one more salvaged item to get. So let's pick that up from over here. And of course it would be silly of us not to actually equip our coat because what does it give us? Six armor. So all we do of course is right click on that and that puts our cloak on which you can see. Now you do have an option to hide your cloak and hide your helm as well which is all very well and good uh, but we'll leave them on for now. Now of course in our uh, normal set what I have to do is if I, if I equip that you'll see that it doesn't have the cloak because it doesn't automatically add it. So what I need to do is go to our back slot which is here. Uh, and you can see that it it's comes up if I click on the little icon to the left. I just select that and I can save that. Would you like to save it to the equipment set? Normal. Yes, I would. And now that's part of our set. And one important thing that I haven't put out is refreshing spring water, uh, which of course is what they give us at the beginning. Uh, I think, or maybe they didn't. Maybe we picked that up. I'm not sure. But that, of course, uh, restores our mana. I'm going to put that on my hotbar there for ease of use. Let's hand this in. Ain't you a chipper looking one? I am a chipper looking one. And we get ourselves a bag. Long live grey mate. Alright, so I definitely want to equip that bag, and of course the bag slots are down here. Oh, no, it's already automatically in, uh, equipped it for us. Just in case you were wondering, B brings up your bags, but if you want to bring them all up, you have to hit Shift B. Well, that's how I've got mine set up anyway. Alright, so we can see that there's a new quest appeared up the top, north of us. Oh my Royal Orders, it's time for you to leave Seraphis, go to the military district with the other civilians, check in with Gwen when you see her across the bridge to the southeast. So we'll accept that quest and that's obviously going to take us out of this starting, or first starting area. You can see we have to go follow the road and there it is. And you'll notice another little trick here, while we had our back turned, and again just trying to explain the phasing technology, as we were talking to Prince Liam Greymane, uh, the quest person that we have to speak to, which is of course Gwen, is not there. Although for this person, this other player here, Sadis, you can see that they were actually interacting with her because she's there for their particular phase of this instance. So it's all done live and in real time and it updates in front of your very eyes. She's disappeared and moved to another part of the city over here for us. But for other players wandering around, uh, they haven't. So very clever stuff. Now I've just noticed that we've gone way over time, so perhaps what we should do here as we make our way to the quest giver is perhaps pull the pin on this first, very first episode. We've gone through a whole bunch of stuff. Actually, there's something else I just noticed quickly. You'll see here on my mini-map, you'll see a bright yellow uh, arrow that's actually pointing us in the general direction of the quest that we have selected so that's quite a new uh, uh, feature and I think let's see if I turn off points of interest is it that no I'm not sure what particular you know, I don't know what uh, filter it is maybe it just comes up uh, all by itself but you'll notice as we start getting close watch that arrow you'll see it actually starts turning into a question mark because the quest giver is nearby so all very handy all oh, very cool, and I must say I really do love the look of this Worgen starting zone. It's very, well, it's very sort of, I don't know if you know Hammer Horror, if you're a British uh, film fan from the early days, and the old Hammer Horror flicks, it's all very classically horror movie, very um, English manor countryside looking, all very dark and dull and grey. It's really cool, and of course that theme extends out into the real world as we leave the city as well. It's very cool. And of course, let's have a look at the close-up of the Worgen models. For those of you that haven't actually, no, what the, probably the two of you that haven't seen it, that's what the male Worgens look like in the game. Very cool looking. Alright, um, I think that's about it for our first episode. We've gone through the new changes in the interface made ourselves a character, gone through a couple of the new gaming systems. It's probably time for us to wrap this one up. We've been well over half an hour and we'll continue on in the next episode of course. Uh, like I said, it won't be a standard let's play. We'll, we'll probably take this character quite a way through the Worgen starting zone, if not the very end, but we may dot other things in amongst it. We won't take it very line linearly. For example, I do want to start a character in the Blood Elf zone, uh, plus I also want to do a Draenei. I love my Draenei chamois. I love chamois here. Uh, and I also just love the Drenai starting zone in itself. So we might hop about a bit, keep it interesting. But for now, hope you enjoy.
enjoyed that. For those of you that have never seen WoW or those of you who haven't seen any of the Cataclysm content, and once again, I do apologize if the sound levels aren't quite right. We'll fix that up in the next episode. So until then, I uh, hope you're having a great day. hope you'll join me in the next episode. And this is Sambo and Seraphis saying take care. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Oh, hang on. Let's say bye. I, wonder if there's a, I can't remember. Is there a bye? Farewell. There you go. Okay, guys. See you later.